Thank you, Mr. Chair. The business community is confronting a China radically reshaped in the image of Xi Jinping. What distinguishes Xi from his predecessors is an unyielding ideological insistence on prioritizing politics over economics and consolidating control at the expense of growth. Exhibit A, China's draconian zero-COVID policy led to a severe and sustained slowdown in the Chinese economy, a slowdown from which China has not yet recovered and from which it might never fully recover. The weight of debt and demography has come crashing down on China at the very moment it can least afford. Exhibit B, China's ill-conceived declaration of a no-limits partnership with Russia on the eve of the war in Ukraine has reshaped the relationship with Europe to the detriment of China and to the benefit of the United States. Exhibit C, China's systematic coercion of businesses since lifting zero COVID, as well as the enhancement of the anti-espionage law, continues to raise ever-deepening doubts about the safety of doing business in China. Xi Jinping is China's most powerful leader since Mao Zedong, and yet he seems to be using his consolidated power to catastrophically mismanage the economics and geopolitics of his own country. The CCP is not merely malevolent, it is increasingly incompetent. Mr. Shum, is that a fair assessment or do you see it differently? It is absolutely the, the assessment that most of the Chinese, the billion four Chinese will agree with you. The, the issue is, uh, the, issue is uh, the way the, cal the Xi Jinping calculates and people like him calculates, they think all these issues are short-term sacrifice they're willing to do, they're willing to exchange because in their view, they have another vision, grand vision to be realized at this core somewhere down the road. Now, the strategic competition between the United States and China contains a paradox. The great competitive advantage of the United States is the rule of law. But the great competitive advantage of China, paradoxically, is the opposite. The CCP's lawlessness creates the economic equivalent of asymmetric warfare. China benefits from a rules-based international order without following the rules. It benefits from an open global market without opening its own domestic market. And when it opens the market, it does so deceptively to expropriate the intellectual property and technology of others. And so, Ms. Lunsbury, how do we win a competition in which we follow the rules and the other side wholly disregards them? Um, well, I did outline a few ideas in my written testimony, and you eloquently just stated accurate uh, characterization of the asymmetry. Um, I don't know what to do other than try to find some incentives for our own companies to really um, allow for the market to um, you know, change on its own through perhaps some pricing rebates, some tech, tax you know, credits. There's got to be other ways to incentivize our own companies to make that decision to um, you know, add some supply chain or, or resilience and or uh, you know, reshore to the degree that will make that asymmetry less and less palpable. I also just think that in general, the data uh, monopoly that the uh, party has right now is something that's got to get more attention. I think you had Dr. Eric Schmidt here last month. Um, he made some great comments, um, but I would, I would urge you to look at how we are managing our data and what types of silos we could create to lessen that asymmetry that, that the Chinese have on our own data. You know, humans are creatures of motivated reasoning. Uh, it's human nature to believe what we want to believe. It's human nature to reason from our emotions and from our economic self-interest. And why, when I see leaders in Wall Street or Silicon Valley or corporate America accuse us of overreacting to the coercive conduct of the CCP, what I often see is motivated reasoning at work. And so, Mr. Kazi, to what extent does the American business community, which is heavily invested in China, remain in denial about the reality of the CCP as a strategic challenge and the reality of China as an increasingly unsafe place to do business? You know, the business community <clears throat> had spent, has spent a lot of time coming back to Congress and complaining about, as a matter of fact, the very same issues that you've highlighted up until when Congress and other members in, in, in D.C. said, look, China is actually a coercive power. Now they're starting to push back. The short answer is they are very much in denial because there is, the idea is there is money to be made and there are ways for us to, you know, perhaps take a stricter line on China in certain things, especially things that affect us, like theft, IP theft and all of the rest, but we don't have to get up and leave right away. There's business to be done, money to be made. 
And recently, Elon Musk said that he was going to uphold socialist values. So he's a free speech absolutist, except in China. So thank you.